Hi there, this is Taylor checking in with some conservation news from the past couple weeks for Pelicanus and Intentional Ecology. Working in the environmental field is an experience of some very high highs and some low lows. As always, there are horrendous environmental stories that deserve our attention, action, and mobilization, but it is our opinion that you can find those headlines in many places. But there are also empowering and inspiring stories that demonstrate major conservation successes from around the globe, achieved by real people who have grouped together to create a better planet. We've been collecting these stories and messages every week for years, and I'm still surprised at how resilient and creative both nature and humans are when facing big challenges. Hi, everyone. We've got about five headlines for today's Peliconus News. I've categorized them into halting destruction, <laughs> protected areas, and forests. These stories are truly incredible and also reminders to me that conservation can actually work. First one, the only one in the halting destruction category. This is coming out of politico.com. The Biden administration cancels border wall construction. President Joe Biden is canceling further construction of the wall along the U.S. and Mexico border, the Department of Defense announced. DOD has begun taking all necessary actions to cancel border barrier projects and to coordinate with interagency partners, Pentagon spokesperson Jamal Brown said in a statement. Today's actions reflect this administration's continued commitment to defending our nation and supporting our service members and their families. In one of his first first acts in office, Biden halted progress on the border wall by freezing money for border wall construction projects and terminating previous uh, President Trump's national emergency declaration along the border. Now, the uh, Politico article doesn't go into this uh, too much, but uh, the border uh, wall was causing all kinds of environmental disasters uh, going through some very sensitive habitats and also um, stopping the migration and the movement just in general of a lot of species. Um, so canceling this border wall is really great for not just the species but the habitats as well. Second category, protected areas. First one in here, actually both of them are from mongabay.com. First one here is the Biden administration lays out 30 by 30 vision to conserve nature. The Biden administration formally laid out its vision for conserving 30% of America's land and waters by 2030. The report, released by the Departments of Commerce, Interior, and Agriculture, include few specifics but conceptualize how the U.S. can better protect and restore biodiversity, improve the resilience of ecosystems to climate change, and increase the accessibility of the nation's parks and wilderness areas. The America the Beautiful report envisions farms and ranches functioning as wildlife corridors and carbon sinks, fish and fishery management practices that stabilize fish stocks, and a job creation plan through a civilian climate core akin to the civilian conservation core of the 1930s. It also proposes creating more safe outdoor opportunities in nature-deprived communities and supporting tribally-led conservation and restoration initiatives, as well as increasing access for outdoor recreation, including hunting, fishing, and hiking across public lands that are currently inaccessible. Next one in this category, new Australian marine parks protect area twice Great Barrier Reef's size. The Australian government has moved to create two new marine protected areas that cover an expanse of ocean twice the size of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. The two parks will be established around Christmas Island and the Cocos or Keeling Islands in the Indian Ocean to the northwest of continental Australia. The new parks, which cover uh, 740,000 square kilometers or 286,000 square miles of ocean, raise the protected share of Australia's oceans from 37 to 45 percent. The decision was immediately welcomed by conservation groups. Last category. Uh, this one's coming from mongabay.com. Also, the other one is too. A Madagascar-sized area of forest has regrown globally since, two, since the year 2000. 
58.9 million hectares, an area of forest larger than the island of Madagascar, has regrown around the world since 2000, finds, an, finds a new assessment from Trillion Trees, a joint venture between BirdLife International, WCS, and WWF. The analysis estimates that 22 to 25 billion trees, which have regrown over the past two decades, could sequester 5.9 billion tons of carbon dioxide, more than the annual emissions of the United States. However, forest recovery is far outpaced by deforestation. Primary forest loss between 2001 and 2020 amounted to nearly 65 million hectares, whereas tree cover loss reached 401 million hectares between 2000 and 2020, according to data from Global Forest Watch, meaning that this reforestation is an incredible thing, but more is needed. Last article here, also out of mongabay.com, Sri Lanka is banning palm oil imports and will raise plantations over environmental concerns. Sri Lanka has imposed a ban on palm oil imports and ordered oil palm plantations in the country to be replaced with rubber trees and other crops over the next decade, citing adverse environmental and social impacts. The decision is based on recommendations from a 2018 report by a panel of environmental experts who linked oil palm plantations to soil erosion and the drying up of water sources. Unlike in other countries where the crop is grown, oil palms aren't a driver of deforestation in Sri Lanka. Instead, they've replaced rubber plantations, which host a higher level of biodiversity and provide more jobs for locals. Another concern is that oil palm is becoming an invasive species occurring in the wild in a forest reserve with as yet unknown impacts on native flora and fauna. I hope these stories bring some optimism and lightness to your month, and I look forward to sharing more in the future.